Hello and welcome to the UK Grad Fest 2020. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name's Tanya Gasser and I recently graduated from the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. I'm so excited to share our play All Over Lovely by Claire Dyer with you tonight. It's my first time directing and I've really been so excited to work with this cast and utilise our time during this pandemic to make some great theatre. I'd like to take the time to thank um, Liam Gartland and Alice Croft for creating such a great initiative. Um, I'd also like to thank the cast for their hard work and dedication. You've been so great to work with. I'd like to thank my family and friends for supporting me. Um, and yeah, so all the performances are free to watch. Um, however, we are accepting donations to help two wonderful charities, Black Lives Matter UK and Industry Minds UK. The details will appear on the screen after the show. You can also follow us at um, Grad Fringe Festival on Instagram and Grad Fringe Fest um, on Twitter for more updates about upcoming events and more links to the charities. So our running time tonight is an hour. So sit back, relax, and yeah, without further ado, here is All Over Lovely. You came. I was curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Better to be a cat than a bitch. What's that supposed to mean? Means you're a bitch, of course. Why? What makes you say that? You know why. I don't. I have no idea. Have I upset you? Of course you upset me. You went to Australia, didn't you? Oh God, are you still harking on that? That was years ago. So? You hadn't seen your mother in years, but you still went. That's totally different. How? Oh. She's my mother. So? So you're not. You're my sister, almost. Oh God. My lover, almost. That was a phase we went through. Well, I'm still going through it, okay? Grow up. Get over it. And do what? Learn to love somebody else. Well, allow me to then. Stop bothering me. I just thought you might be interested. This is going to be a revolution. Well, I like a good revolution. Who's in charge? We all are. What does that mean? <laughs> it means we all agree to go along with the consensus. Doesn't sound like much of a revolution to me. Be patient. The world's going to change. Are you sure? The patriarchal hierarchy will topple and be replaced by a fairer, more equitable society. Will every man, woman and child be given due respect and be allowed to fulfil their potential? Of course. And women will end up on top. On top of what? On top of whoever's underneath. Will we be lovers? Yes, we'll be lovers. And what about Australia? You mustn't upset yourself with thoughts of Australia. Will Australia be forgotten? Australia will be forgotten. <sighs> Who's in charge? We all are. And oh, so smug, so know it all. Who's in charge? I was. I wanted to be. We have to organise, collectivise, network. To do what? Nurture. In history, women were goddesses. They had the power. Oh, for fuck's sake. That is indicative of the patriarchal culture seeping into your psyche. If I smash your face in, will that be indicative of patriarchal seepage or of an intelligent person who's had enough of wishy-washy wank? Women do not need to express aggression. They can communicate. They have an inbuilt empathy with their sisters. We are all on the same side. We all want the same thing. We are all one. Are you trying to limit me? Are you trying to control me? Are you trying to shackle me? Yeah, probably. And you said person. You always said person. Refuse to acknowledge femininity, masculinity, or pronouns of any description. You were lying to to begin with. Why did you come? I was curious. Lonely, depressed, miserable, but probably more honest than the rest of us. More honest than me. Well, I've got it now, got what I wanted. I want you. And the rest, the others still struggling, the ones without middle-class ideals. You've got to fight for it, it's not easy. And if that means slapping on the lipstick and accentuating the sexuality whilst at the same time keeping a stiff upper lip, but stiffened into a provocative pout and a ramrod straight, emotionless back, which incidentally accentuates the breasts sedu seductively poured into a gossard wonder bra. 
and a skin so thick a rhinoceros would bounce off it, whilst at the same time marvelling at the softness and the beauty of the skin tones attentively enhanced by sunbed shops and laboratoire Garnier, well, so be it. It's what we fought for and won. You lost. I'm sure you lost. You were too, too romantic, too insular, too poor. I do it all. I have it all and it isn't enough. It's not what I wanted. I wanted, wanted, want you to prove me wrong, want to prove you wrong, want you to say, no, that's not really what we wanted. We were just young and foolish and it only seems tangible in retrospect. You do not need to grow your own vegetables in order to survive. Well, if you do not, then you become a vegetable yourself. Well then, I shall become a very rich and very comfortable vegetable. Well, fuck you then, fuck me then, please. Oh my God, what a failure, a whinging, whining failure. All this, look at it. You think this amounts to something, do you? You think this is worth something? My God, have you been fooled or what? You came. I was curious. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Better to be a cat than a bitch. Don't start. What? You're starting already. I'm not. You haven't even taken your coat off and you're starting. I'm not starting. You are, you called me a bitch. I did not. You did. You said, better to be a cat than a bitch. You said, curiosity killed the cat. So? So, I answered. By calling me a bitch. No, not unless you were calling me a cat. Well, that was an expression. That was an answer. A bitchy answer. Now you're calling me a bitch. Only because you started. I didn't start. I wasn't starting. You started before you even got through the door. I wasn't starting. Before you even took your coat off. I wasn't starting. I don't do that anymore. What do you mean you don't do that anymore? You've always, anymore. Done. always started. Started at the drop of a hat. No, I'm too old now. Started before even. How are you? Oh, shut up. I didn't come here to argue. When I was seven, this brat came to live with us. She was my cousin. Blonde, pretty, dolly clutching, goody goody. Yuck everything I hated. A girly girl that everyone adored and felt sorry for and said, ah, isn't she cute? I hated her. You were jealous. Jealous? <laughs> of what? Of a brat who walked as though she was a ballerina even though she was only seven? Of a goody goody who helped her auntie round the house and was so well behaved, so amenable, it made you puke? Who'd sit on uncle's knee, still clutching her stupid dolly while he read her pathetic happy ever after fairy stories that she believed and liked and wanted more and more of. Till, finally, she decided she was going to be a princess, just like Andy Pandy. You believed Andy Pandy was a girl too. Yeah, well, only because boys won't wear such stupid clothes. But I never thought she was a princess. He. He was a princess. Her mother always wanted a pretty daughter, a dainty daughter, one who didn't look stupid in pink. And she, Dolly Daisy, fitted the bill. I had my whole life ruined. Not my fault. I didn't come into your life with that express intention. My whole territory invaded. We shared a bedroom. And as I recall, we used to giggle and play together quite a lot when her other little rat pack friends weren't around. I never realised till she turned up quite how ugly and rebellious I was. You loved it. I loved it. I loved our tent. Our tent? A blanket over the clothesline. All enclosed. A secret place. Huddled together. A magical world. Private. Silent. To speak would have broken the spell. So you weren't starting then? Not intentionally, no. So why did you come? I was curious. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, for God's sake, don't start that again. You asked me to come. I wanted your support. Why? I've never supported you before. Oh, you did. Funnily enough, you did. Well, I suppose hatred can give you energy. 
hatred's too strong a word, but yes, something like that. I had to adapt and defer to this moody, bossy, unpredictable madam. Don't call me a madam. Oh, no, of course. Of course, she was a tomboy, little Miss Anarchist. Oh, the romance of it all. Tree climbing and scraggy knees, how pathetic. As opposed to clutching a dolly to your undeveloped bosom. <laughs> so much more adventurous. That was my security. It reminded me of my mother. Well, if a dolly reminds you of your mother, how could you have grown up any differently? Dollies, women, women, dollies. We might as well stop right now, case closed. Have you any idea what it's like to grow up in someone else's house from the age of seven? No. No. Well, shut up then. I'm talking about security, not political symbolism. She was a moody, bossy, unpredictable madam, but she was also energetic and boisterous, and I envied that. I wanted to be like her. I wanted to do all the things that she did, but half of me was scared to try and fail. And, well, the other half of me was scared to try and become better than her. In the end, I simply learned to pour scorn on everything she did and at the same time suck up to her mum and dad. I could not suck the way she sucked. In the end, I didn't even want to. Not wearing black then. Brown boots. He wore brown boots. What? Brown boots, an old monologue about criticising what a person wears at funerals. I wasn't criticising. Did you expect me to buy a new outfit? <laughs> of course not. Did you think I'd shave my legs, wax my bikini line, make a special trip to the hairdressers, replenish my makeup bag and buy a new funeral perfume? No. Did you? Did I what? Did you buy a new outfit? Shave your legs, wax your bikini line, make a special trip to the hairdressers, replenish your makeup bag, and buy a new funeral perfume. You're starting again. Just making polite conversation. Oh, well, thank you for being polite. You're welcome. Not at all. More tea, Vicar? A glass of water would be sufficient. No trouble. No trouble at all. Back straight. Don't say that, it's rude. Don't talk out of turn. Don't say that, it's rude. And never, 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 nice girls don't. Uh, curtsy, curtsy, knees together, don't slouch, act like a lady. Sisters, sisters. Let's have a face pack. Oh, let's shave our legs. Look at her thighs. Oh God, what a slag. Let's go dancing. Oh, let's stay home. Let's tell secrets. Let's giggle about sex. Let's argue. Let's fight. Are you two going to tidy your bedroom? Oh, what? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did we really used to do that? We were only 12. Oh, how embarrassing. You made up the steps. Shut and the words? Shut up. <laughs> Life made no sense to me and being a girl made even less. There was something de depressing about it all, but I could never put my finger on it. You thought too much. You needed a boyfriend. My mum seemed okay, but there was a sadness in her eyes, a look of defeat. She had an intelligence that she deemed as worthless. You don't need intelligence to get a boyfriend, but padding the bra helps. She thought that pulling your shoulders back and not biting your nails was somehow important to life where argument wasn't. Oh, and they love it if you listen attentively and pretend they're intelligent. <laughs> Inequality didn't matter as much as having a clean house and polite children. The greatest thing my mother could give her family was puddings. <laughs> her mum, on the other hand. Oh, here we go. Her mum was swanning around Europe doing something frightfully glamorous with a long cigarette holder. <laughs> my mum, of course, didn't approve, but at the same time... Oh, she was jealous. Jealous as hell. Not jealous of all of it. Jealous of some of it. Which bits? Freedom bits. Oh, the independent bits. So we both became jealous of those bits. Whatever they were. We didn't want to end up like my mum anyway. <laughs> Neither of us. Not that we wanted to end up like her mum. Uh, maybe the end, but not the means. Perhaps something in between. If that was possible. That was the idea, so I got the freedom to wallow around in chicken shit. Oh, and I got the independence to employ a cleaner. And we thought we wanted the same things. 
We probably do. But you did though, didn't you? You did buy a new outfit, shave your legs, wax your bikini line, make a special trip to the hairdressers, replenish your makeup bag and buy a new funeral perfume. I do not have to wax my bikini line. I'm blonde. Oh, well, that's all right then. And what about the rest? Well, you have to make an effort. It is a special occasion after all. Well, you can't just turn up any old how. Dressing gown and slippers. It's a mark of respect. Mark of position. <clears throat> mark of dignity. And you never know, you might catch a man. You're starting. Just trying to give you energy. You don't do that anymore, remember? Ah, oh, that's right, I'm too old now. Too old? I'm 39, practically 40. Oh, life begins at 40. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Do you believe them? Can't say I do necessarily. It's probably because generally that's when the kids leave home. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see a three-year-old making her way in the world. You've got a three-year-old? No, two. Two three-year-olds? No, one two-year-old. One two-year-old and one three-year-old? No, one. No, one? No, one. No, one. Nobody in the whole world. <laughs> I've always got you. Oh, well, let the world crash about our ears. Yeah, we used to believe that. <laughs> you did. Jealous? <laughs> I am not jealous. I never wanted kids, not particularly. And anyway, women have choices nowadays. Often choices? No, definite choices. Definite choices when it comes to breeding anyway. And why did she, of all people, choose to breed? She's not the type. She's, well, she's, she's little Miss Anarchist. Do anarchists not have children? Do we not try to breed little anarchists to fight the good fight? Are we not like Catholics trying to take over the world, if not by fighting them by sheer volume of offspring? If you marginalise us, do we not multiply? If you prick us, do we not breed? You always said you weren't that female. Do people not breed? Is the breeding process not something to do with semen and lipstick? Boy or girl? Which one, this or the other? You're having another. Isn't it obvious? I just thought you'd let yourself go. Can't let yourself go when you never got it together in the first place. I meant fat. Thought you were getting fat. Oh, am I supposed to be insulted? <laughs> Probably not. Nothing can insult you when it comes to appearance, can it? But then again, pregnancy may not become a person of genderless beliefs. Could be a beer gut. Boy or girl? Well, since I'm drinking bud, it must be a boy gut. And the other one? Does it make a difference? <laughs> well, it would be nice to know just out of idle curiosity. Well, since you're so desperate to know, it's a girl. Oh, lovely. Is she pretty? Six days old, I dressed her in blue. Just happened to be blue. And comments were, oh, what a good strong boy. It's a girl, actually. Oh, isn't she sweet? Isn't she pretty? Six days old. It's never too early to condition. Still paranoid about gender then? Of course. Stereotyping and pigeonholing are still crimes against humanity in my book. Haven't changed then. Should I have done? <laughs> Thought you might have by now. Oh, because feminism's been fought and won. No, because you're a mother now, thought motherhood might have changed you. Not because you're allowed a career now. Because if motherhood doesn't change you, what will? The only thing motherhood changes is sleeping patterns and a stronger conviction that the world is truly fucked. Other than that, why should anything? Because you're wrong. Wrong for you. Oh, wrong for everybody. And you're right, are you? More acceptable. To who? More acceptable to who? Who accepts a person who sees her own mother's funeral as simply an opportunity to go out, buy some overpriced cocktail dress and matching accessories and spend the day getting pampered in a beauty salon? Way below the belt. True, but enjoyed saying it. If it gives me confidence, gives me strength, it gives me a sense of who I am at a time of confusion and complicated emotions, why should that be wrong? And anyway, look smart or <laughs> look a mess. What's the difference apart from the fact that you think your mother's worth dressing up for? I don't think now is a time for politics to you. I always thought I would be the one to have children. I was always the more feminine, the more womanly, and I can certainly afford the nanny. Oh, well, breed away then. If you can afford the nanny, well, what's stopping you? 
miscarriages mainly. I dress up, I look good, I spend time on myself because there doesn't seem to be anything else. I've had lovers, <laughs> even tried a husband once, but that was probably just a novelty. Some bizarre notion of being wanted. You were wanted. My parents wanted you. I wanted you. Maybe you just didn't want them. My mum still complains that you never phone, never make contact. Sometimes it feels too late. Sometimes you just lose contact. Feeling. We had feelings for each other once. <sighs> I had feelings for her once. I'm not sure what kind of feelings they were. I had feelings for my mother. I must have. She's my mother. And my aunt and uncle. Well, I love them, I think, once. But I am grieving. I have grieved. I'm sure you have. I mean about my mother. The other thing was just not meant. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Kids are messy things anyway, and besides, women have choices nowadays. Hobson's choices. And I simply wouldn't have the time. Too busy. And who wants nannies crawling all over your house and going through your drawers and invading your space? I had a cousin who did that once. So whether I choose to pamper myself in a beauty salon or not, it's irrelevant. I have grieved in my own way. Surely you approve of that. Do whatever you want to do. It's your mother. <laughs> How was that? My mother married young. Fornicated young. She never married. Made a mistake. She was a dancer. There were opportunities. Do I blame her? Yes. No. Should I? No. Wasn't meant to be for long, short-term contract. But when you're successful, when you have talent, well, you get longer offers, better offers. If God gives you a talent, the worst thing to do is squander it. Is it better to do the best for yourself and your child or to spend your child's life growing in resentment and frustration? And anyway, we caught up eventually. I believe we were closer for it, appreciated each other much more because of the difficulties we overcame and the sacrifices we made. Our mother was a selfish cow who did exactly what she wanted to do, most of it involving men. Definition of a dancer, one who can't keep her legs together long enough to debate whether opening them would be a good idea or not. That's not true. If you say so. She was a good dancer, successful, went from strength to strength. Is that what they're calling it nowadays? You cannot turn down opportunities if opportunities present themselves. We all only have one life. We all have to prioritise, work out what's most important to us, discard the thing or person that isn't. If that be just dumping your daughter on your sister's doorstep, then so be it. Shut up, don't start. Nah, you're right. It's too early and way below the belt. I don't think I know how to. How to what? How to grieve. Fair enough. It all feels quite strange. Well, I suppose you didn't know her too well. No, oh, I know her all right. I've become her. What? A tart? Tart, 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 you, tart. You do? Sorry, I can't help it. Sorry, I can't help it. She was not a tart. Okay, if you insist. I don't carry the way. Oh, and your mother was so good, was she? I think so, don't you? Well, you've changed your tune. What happened to all the scorn you'd heap upon the downtrodden, second-class housewife who'll do anything for a quiet life except fight for her rights? Yeah, I think I'm becoming that. Oh, yeah. Earth mother with your two-year-old and another on the way. Yes, I'm just a housewife and a mother. Feminism has given me that much. So, feminism put the just in housewife. Either that or become just another man. Feminism gave you choices. Hobson's choices. Real choices. Hey ho, the revolution. Yeah, what happened to yours? My what? Your revolution. I couldn't afford the nanny. Did you invite me to talk about feminism? No. What is it? 25, 30 years of the stuff and what have you changed? What's changed about you? You've been holding your stomach in since I got here. No, I haven't. Have. Look at you. No, I have not. I do not have a stomach. I work out. What's the difference? Working out, holding your stomach in. It's all the same. You're still not allowed to have a stomach. 
It's not that. I choose to look good because it's healthy and it makes me feel good. Bollocks. You're just using your prettiness and feminine charm to make your way in the world, same as ever. I don't have to. I use my business acumen. In jeans and a t-shirt? I don't think so. I don't wear jeans and a t-shirt. Exactly. Why not? Why do you have to tart yourself up? Are your suspenders holding up your brains? When there's a woman on telly who looks as scruffy as Bob Geldof, then let's discuss feminism, shall we, sister? Until then, what are you going to do when it all starts sagging? Oops. No, it has, hasn't it? Look at those wrinkles. Look at your face. How did you get to be so old? What we need is some youth rejuvenating face cream with action liposomes, laboratoire Garnier and Le Jardin with a dry weave top sheet. Bet you've got some. In fact, a dry weave top sheet on your face may improve matters. Yes, I knew you would. Look, it says anti-wrinkle. Doesn't work, does it? My placenta's in this, you know. They put human placenta in this. My two-year-old placenta is probably on your face even as we speak. Do I look younger? Yeah, you've got a face like a fetus, so much younger. I've also done psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, behavior therapy, group therapy, aromatherapy, Prozac, massage, meditation, Tai Chi, isolation tanks, aerobics, and colonic irrigation. Colonic irrigation? How the hell does somebody get the idea to have a colonic irrigation? And why? Did you wake up one morning and say, oh, I feel so, so, so full of shit. I think I'll go to the clinic, have somebody shove a hose pipe up my bum, squirt some water at me and see what comes out. Oh, look, a piece of lettuce I ate in 1967. I feel so much better now. What we need to do is turn our back on society, buy up little plots of land, grow our own vegetables, become self-sufficient, and then we'll all be in paradise. My time will come. Yeah, probably with the next messiah. Nah, because the next messiah will want to be in charge and where I live. We all are. Well, feminism gave you something at least. Nothing to do with feminism. Everything to do with equality. We've got men in our group. Obviously, and you're fucking at least one of them. Oh, at least. Would you like a list? Because unlike some people, I don't fall apart every time a man sticks his cock in me. Meaning? You know what I mean. No, I don't. I have absolutely no problem with men. You must have been practicing then, because the last time I saw you with one, you were practically falling apart at the seams. I was only 15, for God's sakes. His name was Tim, and I was mad about him. He was 20 and exciting. He had a car and money and a wealth of knowledge and a sexual appetite that I willingly succumbed to. I was hoping she might get pregnant. That was my mother the vapors. Would be the blue-eyed girl then, would she? Then he dumped me. You shouldn't have lowered yourself in the first place. I was devastated. Anybody who's anybody knows boys are stupid. I felt my world had collapsed. Not that I'd ever had a boyfriend. I felt suicidal. Not that I wanted one. No reason for living. <laughs> it would have been nice to be asked. And my aunt and uncle were out for the evening, leaving just the two of us. And I was crying in the bathroom and I looked such a mess. And I had a cold on top of everything. And I was wearing my uncle's big clumpy dressing gown because it had a secure feeling about it. We all wore my dad's big clumpy dressing gown when any of us felt a bit low. It smelled of nicotine, sweat and beer. Lovely. And I came down to make a cup of tea and I spilt it. And I started crying again because it was the last straw. And she kissed me. I kissed her. She looked so awful. She looked beautiful. She kissed me so lovingly, so softly. It was a great dressing gown. And... 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 Since seven, our body's developing at roughly the same rate. Strange feelings, urges. A compulsion. To do something sexual. Without realising it was sexual. We became secret friends. We both knew how to touch each other to create an electric charge. Because we were both suffering from the same confusion. And experimentation became an obsession. A secret passion. Because although this wasn't sex. Sex was something to do with boys. And there were no boys present. It was something private. 
something personal between the two of us. Secret communication. To speak would have broken the spell. Like adolescent sorcery and witchcraft. And then came sex. This is how sex was supposed to be. I felt wanted, beautiful. I knew what I was doing. I was losing control. And then Australia. Her mother marrying, setting up some new life, some new au pair agency business wanting her, said an apple of her eye. Come with us, she said. Let me be a real mother now. And Dolly Daisy went. And I wanted nothing else. I needed nothing else, just records to make love by and her. She went to Australia and by 16, I was out of the game. You weren't out of the game. Wasn't I? I came back. I'm not going to flatter myself to think you came back because of me. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Maybe you came back because your mother didn't want you after all. Maybe my mother didn't want you anymore. Did I tell you I finally bought the Porsche? How pointless. Did she or didn't she? Completely useless and impractical, of course, the Porsche. But at least it gave me the opportunity to socialise with people that feel having a Porsche is a talking point. It's pointless. Just stop it. What do you mean? <laughs> what do I mean? What do I mean? I told you often enough. Told you ages ago, would you listen? Would you heck? I said, turn the trivial into an art form. Make it serious, make it the most important part of your life. Some people do, other people. People who are determined to see a point in everything, even a humble microwave. I said, make it the best, the latest, the greatest, most wonderful microwave in the world. Of course, I do have the most wonderful microwave in the world. You never want me. I became you, Little Miss Anarchist. You became me. Cut off my hair, let myself go. Scragged around in jeans, tried to be boyish, surly, aggressive. Politics, tried to think politics. What's wrong? What makes me angry? My mother. I hated her. Hated her, selfish, moody, neurotic, cow, fought like a hard-faced bitch with anybody and everybody, then wanted me to mother her like a baby, wanted me to reassure her that I still cared about her, that somebody still cared about her, that she still had it all, that she was still attractive, that she still had money, men, looks, and me. And I spat in her eye, wanted to spit in her eye, spit like you spat, because what about me? Did she love me at all? Her husband she used, didn't love him, couldn't love him, didn't know how to love, didn't know how to love anybody. So she just used him to set up a business, used his money, used his contacts, used his knowledge, then divorce. Quick, clean, move on, no regrets, no feelings. No feelings. She had no feelings. I despised her. I saw in her what you see in me, greed and materialism and that's where you went wrong. See, had you just got yourself something, something to show off about, just to show people you meant business, people would have listened to you then, would have seen what you had to offer. But what are you offering? Nothing. You're impressing nobody. They can't even say she's completely off a rocker, but at least she's got a decent microwave. Me, I can impress. People listen, people take note. I have property. I own land, lots of it. I own practically a whole village in Kent. So people listen to me. Worth well, getting a good microwave then. We all need money. What for? To show people we've got some. Yeah, see, there's a point to everything when you're competing. Competing for what? To prove there's a point. No, there isn't one, is there? There is no fucking point. That's why you came, isn't it? Weren't curious at all, just wanted to gloat, wanted to rub my nose in it. Look at her with her fancy clothes and her fancy Porsche. Who does she think she is? Nobody, as usual, isn't it? That's why you came, to say 39, approaching 40, and what she got to show for it? Nothing, nothing at all, crammed into a miracle of technology, state of the art, fucking microwave, fucking Porsche, isn't it? Oh, actually. Go on, say it. Say what you're supposed to say. Say, what a failure. What a whinging, whining failure. You see all of this. You see this. You think this amounts to something. Have you been fooled or what? I never realised being rich could be so depressing. Don't you laugh. 
Don't you bloody laugh at me. Who's laughing? You are. Sat there all smug in knowledge that you never tried to better yourself because you knew it wouldn't work, knew it wasn't what I wanted. Who's in charge? We all are. Yeah, happy now? Not particularly. Well, do it then. Do what? Do what you came for. Argue, shout, get overheated. Tell me I'm a vegetable. Go on, knock me sideways, make me feel like shit, and then kiss me and tell me how it can be better. I don't know how to anymore. Well then, I'm buggered. I shouldn't have come. I half thought it'd be a mistake, but now I'm sure of it. A Porsche, for fuck's sake, am I supposed to be impressed? And don't ask me to offer up an alternative because I lost a long time ago. Lost direction, lost my energy, lost the will to fight. Never knew what I was fighting for. Only ever knew what I didn't want. Can never say what I did want, except to go away somewhere else. Somewhere away from this crap world and this crap society with its microwaves and colonic irrigation and bikini lines. But your commune? Commune? Yeah, right. Commune. Nah, we had a meeting, lasted four days. We're a cooperative now. A cooperative. A supplier of organically grown fruit and vegetables to a middle class elite who can afford to pay over the odds to be politically correct cabbages. But turning your back on society and creating your own non-materialistic, self-sufficient world where everybody is encouraged to realise their own potential and each person is of equal importance in contributing to the group well-being of an alternative, self-supporting community of like-minded individuals. You remembered. How could I forget? I had. Nah, we're just a small business. A cottage industry. We're even supplying Sainsbury's. We even pay tax, that's how radical we are. Perhaps you need money to be self-sufficient? Lots and lots and lots of it. What are these? Funeral garments. Funeral garments? Are these supposed to be for me? Thought you might want them. Of course, because you never know. I might turn up like Ronald McDonald. But they won't fit. See, I've got childbearing hips now. My hips have expanded to fit me better. Of course, my tampon keeps falling out, but there you go. You wear them. Why did you leave? It was getting out of hand. I don't want to be alone when I die. She wasn't alone. Her employees were concerned. Oh, she'd been dead all weekend. So? Some people are dead weeks, months. It's only when the neighbours report a funny smell that anybody notices. You won't die like that, will you? Doubt it. I might. I don't think you'll care. You'll be dead. You've got your farm, your friends, your family. I want to be you. Is this because of my mother, is it? Is this grief or am I really stuck? Am I really stuck with this pretense till I die like she's stuck with her pretense because it was a pretense? It was all a pretense right down to her nail polish and her hair colouring. I don't think she liked me, let alone loved. That's not true necessarily. Isn't it? She took you to Australia. Did she? Didn't she? She tried. I'm not saying she didn't try. She told me that's what she worked for. You know, setting up the agency, becoming respectable, having enough money to afford to care for me. My mother had nothing and she cared for you. I know. Do you know how she felt when you left? Do you know how my dad felt? Do you know how I felt listening to him go on about you all the time? It was all you, you, you. They hadn't a clue what I was going to do in my life, but certainly didn't think it was anything to get excited about. Be something embarrassing, probably. Something they'd applaud, like saving whales or something. God, I wanted to blow the whole fucking thing up. Did you ever want to be me? Too fucking right I did. I was crazy about you. Nuts about you. I prayed. Every night I prayed to God for us to come back. Which is embarrassing because I was an atheist at the time. And the pity thing was, she did come back, back from Australia, back from down under. Who's in charge? We all are. God, she annoyed me then. The feminist boom was a lifesaver. Oh, a miracle. Perfect timing. The hands of fate. Changed my life. Well, it did change my life. I came back to England in 1980, set up my business using the assets you need to be successful. I was 24. My mother I used. I didn't love her. Couldn't love her. Didn't know how. Didn't know how to love anyone. So I used her to set up my business. Used her money, used her knowledge, used her contacts. 
then separation. Quickly move on, no regrets, no feelings. No feelings. She had no feelings, I had no feelings. Then I got in touch. It was now on my turf, my terms. The flat in London was my flat, my friends. It was going to be my time. Oh, you think so, do you? I just thought you'd be interested. This is going to be a revolution. Well, I like a good revolution. Who's in charge? We all are. What does that mean? It means we all agree to go along with the consensus. Doesn't sound like much of a revolution to me. Be patient, the world's going to change. Are you sure? The patriarchal hierarchy will topple and be replaced by a fair and more equitable society. Will every man, woman and child be given due respect and be allowed to fulfil their potential? Of course, and women will end up on top. On top of what? The wardrobe? On top of whatever's underneath. And I can impress. Oh, could I impress? Lesbianism is a political statement. Yes, been there, done it, done it. Yes, sisters, I'm there, I'm with you, I get the point. A political statement, yes! You and me at 15 all those years ago, we were a political statement. Oh, I am creaming my jeans. I'm sliding off my chair. My juice is on the loose. I've never felt so horny in all my life. Come back to my place and let's be a political statement. If we orgasm, we can call it a manifesto. Did you really just see us as a political statement? Of course not. I was just trying to curry favour with our friends. Your friends. And I knew that wound you up, irritated you. But if I didn't care, would I have found you again? Would I have got you involved? No, I believed in feminism to begin with. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you're right. I believed in anarchy. I didn't want equality. I wanted utopia. Do you really want a revolution? Really? Land. Think about it. A farm, lots of land in Wales or Norfolk or somewhere. Get a group of people, pool our resources, buy it. That is still. You buy it, sell your business, you won't need it. An employment agency is really crap anyway. Who needs that? That's a stupid job. Anyway, we won't need employment, won't need money, won't need men or women or stupid divisions like that. Just need people, people with a human spirit, people who don't give a stuff about the priorities of this inhuman society. Patriarchal society. Materialistic society. It's patriarchal in communist countries too. Of course it is, because it's all economics. That's my point. The whole world's based on money. And money's inhuman. It segregates and separates. Money created lipstick and push-up bras to segregate women. And money created stiff upper lips and ramrod straight emotionless backs to segregate men. Your woman's movement won't get anywhere without tackling the economics of it all. The women's movement is tackling economics. Economic equality. We need to organise, collectivise, network. To do what? Nurture. Because what are you going to do with the kids? Kids are a burden so they're economically viable for this shitty society. But farming, growing crops and being self-sufficient. Everybody all together with their kids. Men and women together. Like monkeys. We could be like monkeys. Monkeys aren't fucked up. Monkeys don't need money. Female monkeys aren't collectivising and networking. Women don't want to be monkeys. Nobody wants to be a monkey. I do. In history, women were goddesses. They had the power. For fuck's sake, goddesses. Diaphanous women waltzing around with urns on their shoulders. So radical. That is indicative of the patriarchal culture seeping into your psyche. If I smash your face then would that be indicative of patriarchal seepage or of an intelligent person who's had enough of wishy-washy woman's wank? I just wanted to be with her. All the time. Constantly. I had an all-consuming passion. I wanted to destroy everything and just have the two of us survive. Just you, me and a row of marrows. And the other woman? What other woman? We all used to meet up in a gay bar. There were men there, but they didn't bother us. Too busy going down on each other in the toilet. I was in the thick of things. <laughs> Popular, entertaining. I was on the cutting edge. A straight woman having a lesbian relationship because it was a political statement. They all fancied me. They were just jealous because you were the one who had me. Nothing political at all. So there I was, holding court. The centre of things, speaking from experience. Speaking from the perspective of a woman who knows both sides and knows the problem inside out. Talking politics and sisterhood. Spouting how two women have loving, caring, sharing relationships as opposed to men having sex. Two women 
developing empathy with each other whilst men seek instant gratification. Two women emotionally linked as opposed to men sticking it in and jerking off. And where was she? While all our friends were listening to this diatribe, where was she? Going down on some woman in the toilets. Going down on some woman in the toilets. My turn to go down under, I think. It was just sex, it was a joke. It wasn't a joke, you'd done it before. Everybody knew you'd done it before. Everybody except me knew, knew what a fool I was. Well, you deserved it. You were a hypocrite. If for one moment I thought that what you were spouting was in any way connected to the way we were living, I might let you get away with it. But it wasn't. You were a liar. Not happy with me. Had to invent me, invent a life for me to look good in front of your friends. You were trying to be so fucking political. So right on. Women this, women that. Let's all be goddesses. Let's all be used to argue. Let's all show the patriarchal society how we can all sit in a circle and be at one with our wounds. For Christ's sake. I wanted to kick your feminist credentials down your throat and if you choke on them. It was the first time in my life that I felt I belonged. That I wasn't just muscling in, that people actually liked me, wanted me, welcomed me into the centre of things. And you just ensured that they laughed at me. I was their evening's entertainment, a laughing stock. You never understood. No, you never understood. I'd much rather it was you in that toilet. Everybody could have watched and really applauded you then. So disgusting, I wouldn't have lowered myself. No, I'd be the one going down. Sorry, was I turning you on? She liked sex. Sex that was raw and rough and angry. She wanted to be humiliated, kicked in the teeth and then fucked. Fucked with a vengeance. She wanted her nose rubbed in it. Wanted me to take her down, way down to the depths of self-loathing because it was the only way she could feel. Only way she felt about herself. Only way she could make contact with herself. And we lived on top of each other and stifled and suffocated till sometimes our arguments and fights turned to hatred. But we became our true selves then, our animal selves, sweating and snarling and loving each other with a passion that was so overwhelming, so consuming. We didn't care what we looked like, how we appeared to each other. Didn't care who was hurt and who was me. We were just entwined together, totally wallowing in mud while the world disintegrated around us. And it all came from down here, way, way down deep inside, moaning and raging and wanting to burst, burst out of us in the true spirit of what? What was it? Femininity? Humanity? Hatred? Rage? Jealousy? She fucked anybody, slagged around with anybody because it was the only way of getting attention. Set herself up as some sort of radical thinker, pioneer revolutionary. People write books about her, see her in centuries to come and see her as the savior of mankind. Yeah, right, if anybody bothered to listen to her at all. Oh, and did they? Did they listen to you? Did they want to know your grand plans, your earth shattering schemes? No, she had to fuck them instead as a joke. Be the joker in the pack, the court jester, because nobody would take you seriously, would they? Nobody gave a toss about what you thought or what you said, just so long as it was funny. All you could be was funny, big deal. We were both funny. Tom and Jerry, Laurel and Hardy, Kane and bloody Abel. You used to say that boys wouldn't listen to you when we were young. And then there you were. Women wouldn't listen to you either. My God, the only reason they fucked you was because unlike the boys, it was politically okay for lesbians to be ugly. It was politically okay to fuck a joke. Go on, do it, do it again. Want me to fetch a knife? Wish now I'd worn black. It's all personal, deep down. I pretended it was political. I ranted and raved about revolution and changing the world and equality in every form I could think of, but really it was just personal. I made it political. I made it political because I couldn't stand the idea that anyone, particularly her, would think I was jealous. I never wanted to be pretty. I never wanted to be some hotshot careerist either, but I didn't want to become like my mother. I didn't want to become obsessed with puddings. I'm 39, approaching 40. It doesn't matter anymore. I make the best of it, like my mother did, like my dad. I poddle around in my little market garden with my friends and pretend it all means something radically political, but it doesn't. 
It just means we're all market gardeners. So you left. I'm not starting. You left. Yes, I left. I meant it. We never discussed you leaving. It's never open for discussion. Everything is open for discussion. I'm not starting. No, I am. Okay, so I left. But then again, you left first. Maybe I was just getting even. You're dragging up Australia again. Right, I am. Everything is open for discussion. My mother asked me to join her. At 16, I was curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Better to be a cat than a bitch. You're calling me a bitch? Yes, I am. Why? Because I'm calling your mother a slag, a tart, no better than a prostitute. In fact, your mother wasn't really a dancer, was she? She was a hostess. We all know that. A hostess. Sleeping her way around the bars and cabarets of Europe, opening her legs for materialism, sucking cocks for capitalism. And what's interesting is she'd rather do that than have to deal with you. She didn't want you. She'd rather have a cock jammed down her throat. Interesting. Well, I prefer being with her than being with you. Interesting. That's not true. Because she never asked me to go. Yes, she did. No, I asked her if I could so that I could get away from you. No, we loved each other then. No, you loved me. I just loved the way you squirmed underneath me. Loved the way you needed me, were besotted with me. You were so exciting, so frightening. A bossy boot, a scraggy, argumentative, energetic anarchist right from seven. And I was so stuck, so insecure, so unsure of myself. All our friends were your friends. All our games were your games. All our ideas were your ideas. Oh, until we were teenagers. <laughs> I thought I had to then, because then I had the advantage, or I had the goods, the necessary abilities to win, till I was dumped, humiliated, <laughs> treated with contempt for granting some spotty imbecile a couple of sexual favors and an abortion thrown in on top with your mother's collusion. Oh, you didn't know that, did you? And in the 80s, and I thought feminism would be your time, that you'd take over, that you'd gain control through revolution and equality for uglies. But turns out it was easy. It was so easy. Of course it was easy. Of course it was easy because feminism was just about becoming like your mother. And you have become her, exactly the same as her, like mother, like daughter. Not so. What's changed? Equality. Oh, don't make me laugh. You're still having to wear lipstick to emphasize the color of your cunt. Still flaunting your sexuality in order to acquire a Porsche. The only thing that's changed is whether you choose to suck dick or kiss ass for fuck's sake. God, you make me so sick I could hit you. Good, it'll stop me from having to hit you. You have done absolutely nothing with your life. You sit there like a beached whale talking about politics and how we should all opt out and blow the system up and grow vegetables because you're too scared to dip a toe in the water. Too scared to try and be halfway better than the next person because you might fail. You're terrified of failing, terrified of anybody saying you've made a mistake. So you pretend it's political, pretend dressing to impress is somehow flaunting your cunts. You're pathetic. At least I'm not screaming neurotic like you. At least I'm not running myself ragged, desperately trying to buy a bunch of useless stuff to fill the hollow void of an existence. You've done nothing. I've had kids. Yeah, pure accidents, I bet. Totally meant, actually. In fact, I'd have bred dozens by now if I hadn't exercised some restraint because I'm so fecund, it's frightening. And like someone who can't even manage one. I didn't want one. Why try then? Because I'm a woman. Fuck off, that's pathetic. I wanted to be a juggling, struggling career woman. I wanted a fashion accessory. I wanted endless discussions about me and my problems coping with a career and kids in the Guardian Women's Pages. I wanted to have it all. I wanted to complain about nannies and the difficulties in finding a good one. And I wanted to pour scorn on the best ones because they weren't as good as me. And I wanted to join the ranks of the patriarchal elite and wield power just as effectively under the guise of equality and revolution. I wanted to have no time. I wanted to be so rushed I had no time for anything, especially myself. I wanted to have it all because I can't see the point. Everything in this life is so pointless. Everything I do amounts to nothing and there's got to be a point somewhere. There's got to be something and I've got to find it before you do and I've got to find it soon because I love you and I want to know why you left. You know why I left? No, I don't. It was obvious. 
You'd be dead otherwise. It was what I wanted. No, it wasn't. What you wanted was triumph. What you wanted was my death. She was chopping carrots, homegrown. You just wanted to drag me down into that hole you're in. She had an allotment in those days. There is a point to your life. It's all about winning. If you were interested in compost, her conversations could be riveting. And you want to call that success? No, no. You want me to call that success? You can't stand the fact that I don't. She never cared what people thought. Shall I? Shall I climb into your hole? We were arguing. Shall I show you how bloody easy it is to do what you're supposed to do and call that success? A tent in the country somewhere. Our blanket over the clothesline. Slot yourself into the mainstream. Self-sufficiency. Our magical world. And then blame everyone else because you're still not bloody happy. I never had sex like I had sex with her. Do you know, if it hadn't been for you, I probably would have been successful by now. Probably would have been running myself ragged the way you are. And she was chopping carrots, arguing. My commune brothers and sisters, all their talk about alternative societies. I said, you do not need to grow your own vegetables in order to survive. Dropping out like hippies, being equal like feminists, being more equal than feminists. She said, if you don't, you become a vegetable yourself. Not doing the male thing, but actually trying to do the female thing. The seasons and the earth and motherfucking nature. I said, well then, I shall become a very rich and very comfortable vegetable. Should I be mad now that we're so part of middle class society we're now supplying Sainsbury's? She said, well, fuck you then. Should I be mad? I said, fuck me then. Should I be raging that anything that could have made the slightest bit of difference in the world has been changed, weakened, diluted, simply to fit the status quo? And the knife goes in. Pop. She just turns around and knifes me. <laughs> slicing carrot, slicing me. Her favourite vegetable. No. I don't care anymore. This stuff doesn't bloody fit. I don't care. I'm happy and I don't give a fuck. I can't get into any of your stuff. I meant it. I'm not sorry. I meant it. Only honest thing I did. Wanted to get inside, right inside, right inside you. Have you be real? Have you be honest? This stuff doesn't fit. What are you doing? I'm wearing black. I'm in mourning for my life. You look pathetic. I'm not finished yet. I've got to accessorise. Right, I'm ready. I hope it's a religious service. Actually, Iran's got the right idea. Trouble is, they've only gone halfway. If everyone wore these Chadar things, men and women, wow. <laughs> we could be anybody under here. All of us just black blobs with eyes, making our way to the DIY store on Sundays. We could be anyone doing anything and we could shoplift. Just seeing each other's eyes and thinking, I fancy those eyes. Then taking them home, what's underneath? <laughs> Lovely or ugly, nasty, dripping thing. Whatever, could be brilliant. That's what I call a revolution. Wait a minute, what about Australia? I had to leave, I had to get away. You were in charge and I wanted to be. Is that why, why you left? And you, why did you leave? It's obvious, you were in charge and I wanted to be. And now? Too late now. I practically own a whole village. I'm selling up the business. No, it's too late. So why did you come? I was curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Didn't it just? So we go to the funeral now. If you're ready. I still don't think I know how to act. See what happens when they chuck the dirt on her coffin. It feels so strange. Just keep an eye on my mum. See how she reacts. Is your mum going to be there? Of course. They were sisters, you know. Frightening. Murderous. Sisters, sisters. There were never such psychotic sisters. Are we really going like this? Why not? What's the matter? Would you rather shag instead? Don't start. What? You're starting. I'm not. You are. It was just a joke. Well, it's not funny. Okay, I was just making polite conversation. Well, thank you for being polite. You're welcome. Not at all. 
More tea, Vicar? A glass of water would be sufficient. No trouble. No trouble at all. 